Um, so how can companies thrive through collaboration? Well, it's certainly true that business has evolved over the years to become highly efficient um, at competing. Um, and only the most competitive businesses have survived. And to pick up the reference to Darwin earlier, um, I, um, uh, the survival of the fittest is not simply about the physical ability to survive, but it's also about how um, we can respond and, and, and how, um, and how, uh, how organisations can best adapt to thrive in the changing conditions um, of, the, of the time they find themselves in. And what we see today, I think, is that the world is changing rapidly um, and the challenges that we as businesses face um, are, are changing uh, rapidly too. Um, and so it's my view that in the future, businesses will need to learn a different set of skills to collaborate just as efficiently um, as we have learned how to compete. Um, and that, um, that, that it is those um, skills that will help us to thrive in the future. Um, so, looking at businesses and, 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 and what we need to um, seek to do, we, I, think, I believe we, that, in, that we need to seek to control our environmental and social footprints, not just in our own operations, but across the value chain. Um, with Unilever's Sustainable Living Plan, um, we decided to take responsibility both for our factories, our offices and our laboratories, and when it comes to the environment, for the way that we source our raw materials upstream and the way that consumers cook, clean and wash with our products downstream. Um, and we were fortunate in, in having the um, information from our product footprinting analysis, which allowed us to see that manufacturing is less than 5% um, of our greenhouse gas impacts, and that uh, raw material sourcing is about a quarter, um, and the emissions associated with the way that consumers use our products and dispose of them accounts for more than two-thirds. Um, so looking across the value chain, we believe in addressing the value chain is crucial, but it can't be done alone. The systems are much too complex um, to be addressed by a single company or by companies um, working separately. We need to collaborate together. Um, if it, when you look at some of our supply chain challenges, for example, with the sourcing of palm oil or the sourcing of paper and board or with affecting recycling systems, um, uh, this, is, this is the case. And what we're finding is that good things often come um, when, we when we choose to collaborate. So I'd like to just take three examples um, uh, to, to illustrate this. The first is collaborating with suppliers and NGOs. The second, collaborating with other consumer goods businesses. And the third, working together with our customers, our retailers in this case. Um, so... Looking first um, at our suppliers, as a large foods business, um, uh, we, uh, we have been affected, like many other large food businesses, by the increasing volatility of commodity uh, crop prices, not just in the immediate um, last few um, months, um, but over the last decade we've seen um, enormous changes um, in, in, um, in the prices of commodity crops. Um, and that introduces uncertainty into the business and it limits the growth potential of, of, of our business as well. So one area that we have been focusing on is, the way, is, is how we can introduce greater certainty into our system by sourcing our agricultural raw materials in, in more sustainable ways. In the Unilever Sustainable Living Plan, we've now set ourselves a target of sourcing 100% of our agricultural raw materials sustainably. Um, and that is the result of about 10 years or more of work um, in this area. Um, it, it's the, that 10 years of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of working um, with our internal agronomist um, and um, with external experts um, helped us to create the Unilever Sustainable Agriculture Code, which we decided last year to publish um, open source so that others um, could also um, uh, work um, and, and learn from um, that code if they wanted to. Um, and, the, and the heart of this is very, of, of working on sustainable sourcing is very much linked to the business case. Um, so we see a win-win opportunity in working with suppliers and farm, farmers on um, the way in which by sourcing in a more sustainable way we can increase yields and reduce um, input costs like the use of fertilizers and pesticides or the use of water. For example, if we've worked with Brazilian tomato farmers um, on drip irrigation and seen as a result of that that they have increased 
their yields by up to 20%. They reduce their water use by as much as 30%, and they've increased their price per kilo as a result too. We've got similar experiences in Spain with gherkin farmers in India and so on. Um, we're also making an effort to link smallholder farmers into our global supply chain, um, and we've set ourselves a goal to um, link 500,000 smallholder farmers into the, our global supply chain by uh, 2020. Um, and part of the work that we're doing is in partnership with an NGO with Oxfam. We both bring complementary skills to working with um, onion farmers in Azerbaijan. Um, Oxfam brings skills of working with the local communities. We bring our skills um, in agronomy and ultimately providing the market for the onions that are produced. And our goal is that those onions one day will be as, um, as competitive as onions sourced, for example, from China. I'd, I'd like um, to move on to my second example, which is working with other consumer goods businesses. Um, and here we'll, I'd like to highlight the work of the Consumer Goods Forum, a global alliance of about 400 retailers and manufacturers from around the world. The Consumer Goods Forum has committed um, to uh, work together to eliminate deforestation from their supply chains by 2020, um, focusing on four forest-intense crops, palm, cattle, paper and board, and uh, soy. Um, and deforestation, as you know, is one of the primary drivers of climate change, accounting for something like 17% of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and so, and, and consumer goods companies, whether we like it or not, are, well, with the uh, growing sourcing, increasing sourcing of these um, commodities, uh, contributing to uh, providing an economic incentivization to suppliers and individuals for cutting down forests. So working with companies like Walmart, Tesco, Coca-Cola, Nestle, and so on, um, we, um, we are collaborating to uh, try and, and deliver against this commitment, uh, working with very complex systems, which we couldn't do um, alone. Finally, I'd like to touch on um, the way in which we are working with our customers, our retailers, and highlight one example uh, where we have worked um, with Tesco. Um, it's quite difficult to find global platforms um, in store which are not simply about re uh, price reduction. Um, but one area which shoppers are interested in is in, is in sustainability. Um, and so with Tesco, we launched last year in Climate Week, um, the Better Future Starts at Home. It's offering um, sustainable products and brands from Unilever and from Tesco and advice as to how to live more sustainably. Um, and uh, that, that platform has worked well. We, it's hit its sales targets. We increased recycling within Tesco stores. Um, and we're now looking at the potential for rolling out to other markets um, where, where Tesco is present. So in summary, I'd just like to say that um, I believe that collaborating is an important part of how businesses will thrive in the challenging um, uh, 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 issues that face us in the future. But there's no doubt that it's very difficult. And I'd be very interested to hear from the audience how um, you, um, how you believe uh, we can uh, increase the levels of collaboration, what makes a good collaboration, for example, and, and, and how to overcome some of the difficulties of working together. Thank you very much.